employee or employee representative on allegations of a breach of the company's disciplinary policy or procedure that may or may not result in punitive action. And the underlying principle guiding disciplinary hearings is embodied in the Latin term audi alterum partem, which simply means the accused has a right to be heard. Don't forget that. Now, <clears throat> the very first point here in the definition, you realize I use the term formal, it's a formal gathering, and that is very important because very often I have colleagues who call me and say, Lauren, uh, we have an issue uh, with a particular case, and I want your assistance. And I will go through the details, ask some questions. I will ask them, uh, was there a charge or was there an investigation? Yada, yada, was there a hearing held? They will say, yes, a hearing was held. And I'll ask them to describe the protocols followed. And they'll say, well, we call the employee and we call him of the plant or call him from his other office uh, to meet with myself, see the HR manager. And the CEO, and we asked them certain questions, and then we, 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 we came to a conclusion based on that meeting we had with the individual in the room. I'll say to you, colleagues, that that is not a disciplinary hearing. Good. As a matter of fact, if that approach uh, was taken by any company at all, whether public or private, they would have lost the case right away. Under no circumstances should a, an HR manager or HR officer or CEO for a company call an individual in a room. Uh, and uh, based on certain allegations, ask them some questions based on what's reported, and then make a decision uh, unilaterally on the matter without following the formal channels that, uh, that are established by the liberations who would convene a hearing. Is that clear to everybody? Colleagues, are you hearing me? Yes, we're hearing you. Yes, yes. loud and clear. Yes, uh, are, are there any uh, comments or anything you want uh, to? To expound on that, you want clarity on this other comment I made just now. So, what would you call it, Lauren? No, that is a jungle word. Okay. Right? And, I, and I've had many cases like that where the person, it is as if the employee, the accused employee, is ambushed. They are called into a meeting uh, unannounced or without any prior knowledge. And then, of course, they're asked all these questions about the matter. Once that happens, even if the company has a reason to, to penalize the individual, once you fail to follow the new process, then a particular case is going to be uh, ruled in the favor of the employee because of the fact that natural justice was observed by the company. Right? And if you realize the second slide here says the employee, the accused, and I'll say always has a right to be heard before I ever forget. So I'm saying to you, even if you have the information, meaning uh, the, the alleged infraction was observed. There is documentation to support it. Uh, there were also witnesses. You need to convene a hearing or what we call a disciplinary meeting. Now, I'll talk about the disciplinary meeting another time, but uh, it's a separate arrangement. But the fact is, the accused has the right to be heard, even if you have compelling evidence about the alleged infraction. Um, good morning, Mr. Marsh. Question. Yes, yes, John. Um, do you need disciplinary hearing as well when you are suspending a person? Definitely, you have to. If you intend to stop, remember, my colleagues, let me share something with you. Uh, I can give these examples to you. Uh, let me go and look for a disciplinary schedule, which I, I did for our colleague. Let me find something for you. Going through some information. I want to share a schedule with you. Matrix, all right. All right, let me share screen now. All right, colleagues, let me share screen again. Are you hearing me well? Hearing you loud and clear. clear. Excellent. All right, so I'm sharing with you a, a, a matrix, right? A schedule. So I'm going to say to you, colleagues, that once infraction is deemed to be very serious, right? 
was this thing to be very serious or serious, you should convene a hearing. Good, because the fact is, if the person is suspended, John, it means that if the, if the infraction continues, uh, there's going to be a hearing again, and then maybe found guilty, they're going to be dismissed. So, was this a very serious offense or a serious offense? The hearing should be convened. All right. As a matter of fact, when you read the, when you go through the doctrines uh, as it pertains to liberation in Jamaica, even for what is deemed to be some minor offenses, previously hearings were convened. All right. So you have to be very aware of that. Once it is serious or very serious, you need to come to convene a hearing. All right, and, and this is all I hear. Any other questions? I'm going to move on. All right, so before I get into my presentation fully, I'm going to put you into groups because you have to understand uh, certain procedures when it comes to planning a year. So I've put some questions together, which I want you to discuss collectively, and then we'll we'll discuss it together when we come back from the break. All right? I say 15 minutes. That should do it. If you need more time, you let me know. But I'm going to know. Put you into rooms. Please take a picture of this. Take a picture, guys. Please. All right. Oh, there's an error here on this slide. The last point of everything. So, one of them. to share it again. There's an error. Other process. Other process. A point of clarification, Sir Marsh, if I may. Yes. Uh, if I heard you correctly, you did say that a team member cannot be suspended. Um, without a disciplinary hearing. No. Um, is it the same as administratively because there are occasions where you will have to have the team member proceed very, on administrative leave. Very good, very good point. Prior, very good so, point. prior to the disciplinary hearing. Mm -hmm. So that's what to make sure that we're on the same page. Yes, so let me clarify that point. Excellent. So the fact is this, uh, in the public sector and for some organizations, when an individual commits a serious offense or a very serious offense, say they're, they're accused of fraud or fighting or stealing, they will be removed from uh, from their station. This is this is deemed to be time off with pay or administrative leave. Good, the person has to be compensated while they're off. Uh, for some organizations, they, they tend to call this a suspension. But my advice to you is that don't use the term suspension, use the term administrative leave or time off with pay. Because if you send the person home on quote unquote suspension to investigate the matter, and you don't compensate them, it may be deemed that you already took action against the individual. Are you following? Yes. Another point of information, but... Uh, no, no, hold on. I want to ask, please. Uh, did you follow my point uh, I just made? Please? Yes, yes, yes. All right. I want to ensure you follow this. All right. No, no, go ahead. I was saying sometimes based on the egregious nature of the conduct or misconduct or the allegations, um, there are occasions where you can or should be able to suspend a team member without pay based on the egregious nature of the infraction. Or is it a general rule of thumb? That it's a general rule of thumb. Once you intend, remember, colleagues, you're innocent until proven what? Guilty. Okay. Good. That is the rule of thumb. Okay. So the fact is, if you're going to investigate the matter, you decide to send me home, which is a company or HR. You have to compensate me while I'm out. Somebody's microphone is open. You have to compensate while I'm out on administrative leave for that period. Whether it's one month, two months. I've had cases where it's out one entire year. It's like a long vacation while the company is investigating. So you, you have to compensate. For public competent companies, uh, what they may do is, is half pay or quarter, depending on the, um, the infraction, the, the allegation. But once you're private, you have to come back. Uh, Otiwa, your microphone is open. Yeah. Um, Dr. Marsh, sorry. Uh, hold on, hold on, John. There's some microphones open. I'm hearing. Check your microphones, colleagues. All right, John, go ahead. Um, Dr. Marsh, yes. I just want to know what is the uh, minimum 
time preparation that we can give to the employees when when you know before we can proceed to disciplinary hearings we're gonna get there that's all yeah Oh, sure, sure. Sure, so we'll get there soon. But colleagues, take this on. I'm going to put you into breakout rooms. Take a picture. I'm going to fix the lap. Number six was the error. Number six. Sorry, bias it. To say proper the chronological sequence of the processes that should occur before spending a hearing is going to be a very good question. I want to see what your steps are like. So I'm not going to put you into, let me stop sharing. Uh, put you into breakout rooms for 15 minutes. Uh, let me just create a uh, code for what should do. And create these rooms and I said we do it. So we need more time to let All right. And I want to open the room, so. Hi, right, Melissa. Uh, 